It's Friday, January 7th, and it's time for your Barbados City Morning News update. Barbados recorded a 24% drop in overall crime last year. That update on the status of criminal activity in the country for 2020 and 2021 from Police Commissioner Richard Boyce. He reported that 5,391 crimes were reported in 2021 compared to 7,079 in 2020. Emmanuel Joseph has more. That figure represents a reduction of 1,688 reported cases or a 24% decline in total crime. Providing a breakdown of the categories of offences, the police commissioner disclosed that major crimes which include murder, rape, aggravated burglary and theft from the person fell by 28% last year. He explained that 951 cases of major crimes were reported in 2021 as against 1,323 in the previous year. The police commissioner said that other reported crimes such as public order breaches, assault and crimes against property decreased by 23% last year. He said there were 32 murders recorded in 2021 when compared to 41 in 2020, a decrease of 9 cases or 22%. Boyce announced that firearm-enabled murders moved from 26 in 2020 to 17 in 2021, a reduction of 9 or 34 percent. Turning his attention to illegal drugs, the top cop said the provisional statistics provided up to the end of November 2021 show that there were 924 crimes in this category. But he pointed out that for the corresponding year, 1,440 such crimes were reported. Boyce then drew attention to the incidence of domestic violence, for which the provisional figures up to the end of November last year were 491 reports, while in 2020, 498 were received by the Barbados Police Service. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The leader of the Democratic Labour Party gives a sneak peek into some of the party's plans for the next five years if elected to office on January 19th. Villa de Pisa promised that reducing and eventually eliminating the garbage and sewage contribution levy will be high on the DLP's agenda should it form the next government. Addressing the launch of the DLP's 2022 election campaign in Checkerhall, St. Lucie, de Pisa said that the GSC levy, which went into effect in late 2018, remains one of the DLP's concerns. If ever there was a Mr. Mother, was it? Because the majority of the country has no sewage provisioning and the rest of us don't know any garbage truck coming. But worse than that, from then until now, there has been no reckoning to you as to how much money that garbage and sewage levy has collected. And so there has to be another way to address that. And the Democratic Labour Party is committed to the reduction of the garbage and sewage levy and its eventual phasing out because there are tidier and more accountable ways to raise the revenue that is required and one of those ways is to diversify our economy. She said that the DLP has a plan to generate economic growth amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a plan and the plan has to have some measure of relief for the present but it can't be an airy fairy idea it has to be one that is also linked to spurring development into the future. And so the proposals that we have come up with are intended to give you space in your households, to give you room fiscally, to give you some money in your pockets to allow you to operate your home. And I am not talking about empty gimmickry. When in 2019, one of the first money grabs was land tax. 
Do you trust them now to give you land tax relief? Ask yourself that question. A new system of governance that prioritizes independent accountability for members of cabinet will be implemented in Barbados if the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Bishop Joseph Atherley, is elected to government. Bishop Atherley made the promise during a visit to Eden Lodge with APP St. Michael North candidate Mariah Phillips. He explained that a key feature of this new model of governance would require each sitting government minister to report to a citizen's panel every six months. What we're committing to is a new model of governance and it will include, and I assure you of this, once we are elected, it will include a mechanism that would involve people's participation as Maria has been suggesting. The people in Barbados, once they elect a government by marking an X against somebody's name of a party, are then distant from the process and have no direct influence on the process until the time of the next election. Now, we want to set up what we call citizens' panels. And we want to give to citizens' panels certain significant roles and responsibility. One of which is this. Every six months in the Parliament of Barbados, every minister of government, must come before a citizen's panel and answer, be accountable, especially if there are questions raised with respect to any issue in relation to his or her portfolio. Bishop Avery complained that while the current mechanisms are useful, they are still too dependent on cooperation from the government. He noted two instances under the current administration where decisions were made with little to no accountability. One is the move to becoming a republic. I mean, opinion is strong in Barbados and elsewhere that we are getting this wrong. In fact, there's some who even question that we are living um, under a proper constitutional structure at the moment, the way this thing has been done. And Barbadians were excluded from that process largely and the government pressed on. Now we are a republic without a constitution. Yet we operate on the constitution, which we revoked and repealed, so to speak, when we canceled the, the ordering council on, uh, to which that constitution was attached, in my view. But the legal luminaries can speak with, with reference to that. It's just one illustration. The other one has to do with this whole management of this vaccine, this, uh, this uh, vaccine saga, a sad story in the life of governance and government in Barbados. And government has not yet properly accounted for what went down where we engage an intermediary, apparently or allegedly to source vaccines on our behalf at extremely high cost, extremely high cost. It was an attempt that failed. But from all that we've been able to glean, the cabinet was not aware of that. The Minister of Health had no knowledge of that. A permanent secretary acted on whose authority? Now that's the kind of level to which we have descended when it comes to governance in Barbados. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional developments now, health authorities in Antigua and Barbuda report that the country has recorded three cases of the highly transmissible Omicron variant of COVID-19. The country's chief medical officer, Dr. Rhonda Seeley Thomas, spoke to ABS News about the samples sent to CAFA. 25 samples were sent to CAFA. Of those, uh, three were found to have the variant of uh, Omicron. Uh, two females and one male, age ranges from about 25 to 55 years. Uh, two of them, you can confirm, were actually persons who traveled into Antigua and Barbuda. 
and the third sample was actually somebody who um, whose resident here there was no travel history. The CMO says it is believed that there is community spread of the Omicron variant given the rise in cases. Some months ago that we did indeed have um, community spread for COVID-19 in Antigua and Barbuda. The fact that um, the two individuals, two of the individuals, they were actually had a travel history. One individual, as I said, had gave no travel history, but um, uh, more than likely that person would have picked it up from somebody in Antigua and Barbuda. We're not sure yet whether or not it was somebody who had traveled in. But um, given the number of cases that we've been seeing over the last few days, you know, um, and now that we know that Omicron is on Ireland, we can only assume that community spread is there for Omicron in Antigua. And finally, recent studies suggest that the Omicron variant of COVID-19 is less likely to make people seriously ill than previous COVID variants. But the head of the World Health Organization, Dr. Teros Adamon Gabriesos, has warned against describing the Omicron variant as mild as it is killing people across the world. While Omicron does appear to be less severe compared to Delta, especially in those vaccinated, it does not mean it should be categorized as mild. Just like previous variants, Omicron is hospitalizing people and it's killing people. In fact, the tsunami of cases is so huge and quick that it is overwhelming health systems around the world. Hospitals are becoming overcrowded and understaffed, which further results in preventable deaths from not only COVID-19, but other diseases and injuries where patients cannot receive timely care. First generation vaccines may not stop all infections and transmission, but they remain highly effective in reducing hospitalization and death from this virus. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.